My presentation is on our study on the contributory role of socioeconomic factors to the development and spread of anti-malaria drug resistance. And we know that most of the studies on anti-malaria drug resistance have been conducted from the parasitological and pharmacological perspectives. And what we've done is we've looked at this issue from a socioeconomic uh, stance and we try to explore the existing anti-malaria drug use behaviors that can promote drug resistance and looking at its distribution across uh, socioeconomic gradients. And in doing this, we used the mixed method re uh, research approach where we started with a qualitative study which informed the design of a measurement instrument that we use for a quantitative survey. And we've done this using the Nigerian population and our decision to use the Nigerian population is underpinned by the high malaria burden in Nigeria, the high uh, poverty rate in Nigeria and also the um, uh, demographic uh, and the health inequalities in Nigeria. So what we've found so far is that uh, when symptoms are experienced, that socioeconomic measures like educational level, household income and type of settlement tend to determine treatment behaviours and therefore inform and determine uh, people's uh, treatment experiences. So we found that in addition to uh, already known anti-malaria drug uh, be, uh, use behaviors that promote drug resistance, like stopping treatment to save drugs for future use, uh, sharing of anti-malaria drugs with others, and uh, use of monotherapies and non-adherence to recommended anti-malaria drugs. We also uh, picked up a new anti-malaria drug use behavior that is actually uh, important in drug resistance, and it was the practice of mixing drugs for future use. As a, it's, uh, it's kind of a form of a, uh, polypharmacy, but the practice of mixing is a bit distinct in the terms that people in rural areas who can't afford the full complete cause of anti-malaria drug uh, can opt to go to the drug vendors who can split the complete cause into individual doses and then sell them as individual doses rather than a complete cause. And that practice alone has a huge potential of exposing the parasite to subtherapeutic doses which can promote drug resistance. And in addition to that, this mixture, it's not just the anti-malaria drugs, they also add analgesics and antibiotics. And each of these drugs are added in single doses. And there is no evidence of the drug interaction of these drugs in the mixture, which there's a possibility of the interaction can affect the efficacy of and efficiency of the individual drugs. Also, we found that mixing with the way it's done paves way for uh, the dispensation of fake and expired anti-malaria drugs because these drugs, when they are mixed, they are taken out of the original packet and cut it in, up into uh, individual bits from the blister pack. So people don't get the original packet of drugs and have no information about the, the drug they are taking. Where do we go from here? We believe that in order to preserve the efficacy of anti-malaria drugs in use, there is need for control strategies that are focused on improving socioeconomic status of people in endemic countries, given that practices like mixing of drugs, sharing of anti-malaria drugs with others, and saving of anti-malaria drugs for future use, they are all uh, behaviors that we found more with those at the lower socioeconomic gradients. And we believe that these behaviors are more of coping strategies for the cost of anti-malaria therapies. Thank you.